a movement founded with the highest of ideals. A movement always bedeviled by profound differences and in recent years, a movement laid low by bitter divisions. It's the honour of my lifetime to lead this great movement. A new era now with a leader pledged to restore unity. But as Keir Starmer experiences a tough period, divisions are bursting into the open. Foul play comes the cry from adversaries of the left as Newsnight sees evidence of the depth of planning on the left to challenge established Labour figures. I think up and down the country, there were attempts to destabilise Labour MPs, to get rid of them. I think if people had known that these conversations were taking place when they were taking place, there would have been real shock. I think even Jeremy Corbyn would have uh, condemned that kind of behaviour. Hold your horses, says a new MP from the left. The Labour Party is nothing without its trade unions. Uh, we were born from the trade unions. Uh, we remain a, a, a party of working people, working class people, and as such, I think our unions' influence and involvement in our structures is, is not only proper, but imperative for us to continue. A new flare-up of old embers after Newsnight saw emails by a West Midland Unite activist outlining plans to try and unseat leading Labour figures. In an email dated the 12th of February 2018, addressed to a senior Unite official, Howard Beckett, the activist Steve Price outlined plans to influence the selection of councillors and to put the skids under the former minister John Speller and Tom Watson, who was then Labour's deputy leader. Newsnight has also seen internal Unite emails in which officials discuss Mr Price's first email, one said that one hour may not be enough time to deal with all the issues he had raised. In a second email on the 15th of March 2018, addressed to Howard Beckett, Steve Price wrote of how his networking was vital in building up trusted left routes in 59 constituencies. Finally, Steve Price wrote that it had been agreed that he would be paid, but he needed a form of words to describe what he was, wait for it, not doing. In a statement to Newsnight, Unite mounted a strong defence of a union's right to pursue its political agenda, said that Steve Price's plan was not accepted by the union and insisted that no payments were made. A Unite spokesperson said, it is a long-established practice across the entire trade union movement to fund candidates who stand on a platform that will advance the lives of our members. This is not unique to Unite. There is absolutely nothing inappropriate with either Unite or any third party providing clean and transparent funding for political activity. But a nemesis of the left says they are choosing the wrong target. It's outrageous that at a time when all our focus should have been on uh, defeating the Conservative government in the interests of the people whom we're elected to represent, that the Unite, our biggest union, that there was a discussion going on about how to undermine sitting MPs and get rid of them in something like 59 constituencies, that there was a discussion about getting rid of councillors who didn't meet the political agenda of the few people at the top of Unite. There was a discussion about sacking key officials at the Labour Party, the General Secretary and uh, the official in charge of looking at anti-Semitic complaints. And there was a discussion about placing people in seats when uh, MPs were retiring, all those seats were seen as marginal. It is appalling to envisage that all that was going on when we were all trying to defeat the Conservative government and as a trade union, never has it been more important for them to do their day job which is to defend their members' interests against all the changes that come from the gig economy, from insecure labour and from the challenge to employment rights. Steve Price has not responded to a request from Newsnight for a comment. A brief foray back into the political world for Labour's former deputy leader to issue a warning. Well, the problem, I think, for the Labour Party is, whilst United carries on with its own internal politics and plays these hard left games and appeals to its narrow audience, that plays very badly with mainstream voters on the doorstep. 
and we're getting to the point where the behaviour of some of the Unite candidates is actually going to impact on the electoral outcome when the general election happens. Keir Starmer can't afford to let that happen. I've absolutely no doubt that Keir Starmer can face these people down. In fact, he's already shown that he can do that. Um, but why make his job harder than it already is? That's the point I'm trying to make. A Labour MP who supports Unite defends its approach. Unite's politics are clear, and I think that's important too. There's nothing worse than an organisation whose politics are not clear. People don't trust said organisation. Their members give them a mandate and they act on said mandate. That's, that's key. But I think it's completely unfair that this idea that Unite are not focused on, on you know, attacking the government for their disgraceful policies is completely wrong. If we look at what Unite and our other trade unions have been doing throughout the entire pandemic to make sure that workers have had the support that they've had, that is very clear. The language can be milder these days, but it doesn't take long to find wholly opposing world viewpoints within the Labour Party. This is still a deeply divided and traumatised movement after its worst electoral defeat since the era of the Depression in the 1930s. Keir Starmer believes he can chart a way back to number 10 with a united movement. History would teach him that unity is vital for success. The present would suggest that achieving that is still a tall order.